Hi, Danny Grayson Jude. Welcome to the Mealtime Insulin Dosing Guide. This is the introduction where I'm going to lay the foundation for basically how we're going to tackle high carb meals, balanced meals, and high fat meals to try and get the glucose in target as much as possible. So I'm condensing about 13 years of deep learning into, well, hopefully just a few, a few short minutes so that you can take away the key action points moving forward. So let's get stuck in. We're going to build towards this, a simple guide at the end where you'll understand what happens with high carb meals, what you can do to make sure that the CGM profile stays as flat as possible um, for both high, high carb meals. Even with balanced meals, you still get a spike. How can we basically flatten that spike? And then with high fat meals, why is it that we go low initially and then really high afterwards and wake up with glucose levels really high in the morning? The amount of times that I've had a pizza or a takeaway, gone to bed with glucose levels in target, thinking I've done the job, and then woke up with glucose levels of 15 or 16, really annoyed, and then it's a really poor start to the day. So there is, I've spent so much time trying to work out how to do this. I wanna make it really simple for you by the end of this um, session or the end of this guide. So I want to just touch over a couple of things that we've been through in the foundation section in the bolus insulin um, part specifically because they're going to be key elements to understanding why things happen to the glucose levels after certain types of meals and more importantly why different strategies work. So remember that people with type 1 diabetes suffer from an issue of not having enough insulin in the portal vein. So just as a quick recap, people without diabetes, their pancreas sits just above the portal vein. Therefore, when we eat foods, especially carb foods, they get digested, they go into the portal vein, they go through the liver, and the pancreas drops insulin in here so that most of the glucose gets stored in the liver and never makes it out into the outer blood circulation. Type 1 diabetes is very different. The insulin goes in into the out outer blood system first, therefore there's very little insulin in the portal vein, very little of the glucose from the meal gets stored in the liver, therefore it all goes out into the bloodstream and gets stored in the muscles and sometimes fat tissue. So the key thing that we need to do here is try to, certainly for high carb meals, make insulin get in there as quick as possible and get working as fast as possible. So as the glucose appears in the blood from the meal, there's enough insulin available to push it into the muscle cells and fat cells so that the glucose level doesn't go too high. So obviously if you don't have type one diabetes, you don't need to worry about this. But if you do have type one diabetes, you need to get a way to make insulin appear in the bloodstream faster. And once it's in there get it to the muscles and get it working faster now i'm sure you've already got some ideas from what we've been through in the foundations um couple of modules but we'll move on to those shortly but just remember that people with type 1 diabetes it's very difficult to keep glucose levels under control after eating because there's not enough insulin in the portal vein there's not enough glucose stored in the liver therefore all the glucose gets into the outer blood system so that's for the high carb meals where the glucose gets absorbed very, very quickly. But then remember my Christmas day, we've got the opposite end of the spectrum. So on Christmas day, 2018 and 2019, I had a 200 gram carb, really high fat, luxurious meal with loads of energy, but particularly loads of fat. And this is what happens. You give the insulin dose, which has had about three o'clock, and then the glucose level stays okay for two to three hours, and then it starts to climb, and starts to climb really high, even though you have given the right amount of insulin for the carbs based on your carb ratio. So there's something going on with these high fat meals that makes the glucose level goes really high. We'll get into it in a minute, but essentially a really high fat level in the blood or specifically in the cells makes insulin not work very well. Therefore, you may need something different. You're going to need either a lot of extra insulin to overcome it. Hence on Christmas day, 2018, the insulin dose for the meal was only 10 units. So I'm on a one unit for 20 gram ratio. I had 200 grams carbs, therefore I had 10 units here. I required an extra 15 units worth of corrections here, an extra 150% on top of the insulin dose to get it back down. So you can see this insulin resistance effect from all this high fat when you have a super duper high fat meal. It doesn't require just a bit of extra insulin, it requires a mammoth amount of extra insulin to bring it down. But extra insulin isn't the only way to overcome this. Look what I did in Christmas Day 2019. I gave the same 10 units of insulin here, so we had about the same effect initially. As the glucose level started to go high, over the next two to three hours, I did effectively 40 minutes worth of exercise. Pretty aggressive exercise, you know, guaranteed. But that level of exercise 
allowed the insulin that I'd given to be worked stronger and longer and also open the side door to my cells to allow a lot more glucose in to go in the side door that doesn't require insulin. So you can see 40 minutes worth of exercise was equal to 15 units of insulin here and actually did a better job. So there are two different strategies we can think about when we think about high fat meals. One is just pump a load of extra insulin in, which will work, might not work so well initially, but it will work. The second is to think about, well, could we do a lot more activity and exercise after eating these meals, or maybe even a combination of both. Now, I said that I would go into, well, why does this happen? Most people would say, I give my insulin for my carbs, I've worked out the carbs correctly, therefore the glucose level should stay in target. That does work well when your meals are normal. You have your usual amount of protein, your usual amount of fat in a meal. But when you have a really high fat meal, like a pizza or a Christmas day or a takeaway, the high fat that causes a real problem. And I want you to remember this, you don't necessarily need to know the deep mechanisms, but it's something called the DAG effect, the, day, the diacylglycerol effect. And if you want to really learn about it, you can go to Peter a tears number 140 of the drive where Gerald Schumann, Schumann spends two and a half hours going through it in detail. I'm obviously not going to bore you to death with that here but what I am going to teach you about is the most important part of it and this is what it is. <clears throat> so when you have a high fat meal let's take an, in a full English breakfast. Plenty of carbs in there, there's also quite a lot of fat represented by these little back, glycerol backbones with three fatty acids attached to it. This is just carbs. So when they go in, they get digested. You can see that both carbs and fat go into the digestive system and they end up going into the portal vein. And then you can see some of the fatty acids go across into the blood and some of it into the liver and some stay in the blood. And this is the key thing that I want you to understand here is, first of all, when you have a really high fat meal, it slows down how quickly the food leaves the stomach. So the glucose appears in there a little bit slower. So often we have to be careful with giving all the insulin up front because if we give all the insulin before it all gets absorbed, we might go low first. So that's one thing to watch out for. But the second thing to watch out for is when all this fat starts getting absorbed into the bloodstream two to three hours um, after eating, there is a very high fat level in the blood. And then when there's a very high fat level in the blood, you can see in the liver cells and you can also see in the muscle cells that some of that fat goes in and it gets turned into something called diacylglycerol, which is basically it's still got the glycerol, the fat still got a glycerol backbone. It's still got two fatty acids, but now it's got a hydroxyl group. And basically what happens is these two little fatty acid um, here, they stick to the cell membrane, but then dangling off on the inside is something called a hydroxyl group. And what that does is it attracts something it's called protein kinase C, which is just basically something within the cell that comes to the cell surface. And what it does is it stops insulin binding. So you don't really need to know all of that, but I told you just so that you know. But what you really need to take away from this is, number one, when you have a really high fat meal, the digestion process is slowed, the glucose appears in the blood a bit slower. Therefore, often we have to be careful with giving all the insulin up front. We need to give not all of it up front and a little bit later. We need to delay the insulin delivery. But what we're also going to need when we have a really high fat meal is extra insulin. And the reason being is two to three hours after eating, all these fatty acids get into the cells. They turn into these DAGs, diacylglycerols, and the DAGs basically make the insulin not work very well. They effectively make the lock and key mechanism very rusty. So that's the best way to think about it is a high fat meal makes the locks on the cells very rusty. Therefore, insulin cannot open them as effectively. And there's only two ways you can overcome that. One is to pump more insulin in to overcome it. The second is to start doing lots of exercise to either burn up the DAGs or open a side door to the cells to allow glucose to go in. And that's what we're going to get to in the high fat meal. Well, I've spent a bit of time going through this here because we'll repeat it in the high fat, but it's important to remember high fat meal slows the digestion. Therefore, you need to slow down how quickly the insulin goes in. High fat meal two to three hours after you get loads of dags in your liver cells and your muscle cells, which makes the insulin key locks rusty. Therefore, the insulin can't work as well. Therefore, you're going to need either more insulin to overcome that or you're going to need exercise to overcome that. Really important point. 
So let's summarize there. We've laid the groundwork here for what we're about to go in. People with type 1 diabetes suffer from a lack of insulin in the portal vein, especially when you have high carb meals that get absorbed very fast. Therefore, we have to really think about speeding the insulin up and pushing it around the body so it can match the glucose going into the bloodstream. When you have a really high fat meal, this causes insulin resistance. Essentially, high fat gets into the cells, gets turned into a DAG. The DAG makes the lock rusty. The insulin doesn't work as well. Therefore, you're going to need either a lot more insulin or a lot of exercise to overcome that to keep the glucose levels in target. So now we've laid the groundwork, we're gonna move on to high carb meals. I'll see you shortly.